Thank you for joining me. Let's start with, tell me about your district, Jill. Sure. Well, we are the ninth largest unit district in Illinois, um, which puts us a, a little bit west of Chicago in Naperville, a suburb. Uh, we have about 20, 22 square miles. Then we serve Naperville, Bolingbrook, uh, some kids from Lyle and Woodbridge. Um, as a unit district, we do have 23 different school sites. So we have an early childhood center, 14 elementary schools, five junior highs, two comprehensive high schools, and one um, connection center for our students post, uh, post high school. Um, we have about 16,500 plus kids in the district. And of that, we have a 97% graduates attend college. Um, we have about 2,500 staff members of that, about 13, 1,400 are full-time certified staff. Um, That's a lot of students to support. Yes, yes. So what is your role? How do you support those students? Sure. So I serve as Director of Innovation and Learning here in the district. And so my job is kind of unique because I spend a, a big chunk of my time in the curriculum and instruction uh, department, but I also have a foot in our instructional technology department. So I kind of split my time between both. Um, this is the 26th year I've been in education and um, all of that I have had uh, some work within our career and technical education area. So I started as a business education teacher and kind of moved through several different districts, um, been a curriculum director before. And so my role now is really working with our college and career readiness and our career and technical education programming. Um, I work with a lot of our blended and online learning um, and anything else that might get uh, put under that umbrella. So. Yeah, I know we've talked a lot and you've been dealing with a lot of uh, kind of a catch all situation now, you know, at the district as things have come up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you've had schoolings for how long now? So we implemented in, oh, geez, you guys are going to stump me. It's probably our fourth year with you all. Um, it's hard to, we, we implemented officially with students the fall of 2019. Um, but we had a, a lot of lead up time to that with um, preparing for that implementation with training. And then we also had kind of a, an interesting year with pandemic and virtual learning that happened kind of in the midst of our, our implementation. So yeah, we've been with you all since 2019. I'll definitely wanna hear more about that implementation, but before we even get to that, what made you look for a college yeah. readiness platform. What made you want to go out sure. and say, hey, we really, we really need something here? Sure. So we actually have two strategic goals in our district around college and career readiness. Um, one really is laser focused on working with our six through 12 counseling program and really finding ways to, um, to support students in their readiness, right? Like, so we, we even developed curriculum that we deliver with our counselors um, around standards in college and career readiness, um, post-secondary research and selection, and financial literacy. Um, the other kind of strategic goal we have is around providing opportunities for our students, especially at the high school level, to participate in programs of study that are um, centered around different career clusters. And, and ultimately, some of our kiddos can, can um, earn a diploma endorsement in those particular career cluster areas, provided they've done you know, the coursework, they've, they've got some early college credit, they have done some authentic learning on, in the workplace, um, participated in some team challenges. So you know, that's kind of what was happening locally for us. And along you know, simultaneously, you know, that you know, nationally, and then also at, at the state level in Illinois, some legislation came into place that said, um, you know, we want to also start measuring students' progress and success towards college and career readiness. So some new indicators came out for us as districts to start collecting um, beyond just a test score for a student, right? Like we, we, we need the more of a portfolio of students' experiences so that they could show success in their progression in college and career readiness. So both to support some of the nuts and bolts work that we knew we had. And then also on the back end for us thinking about the amount of data and the different types of data that we were gonna be collecting, 
we knew we needed some, some help. Um, we had had some platforms, both at the junior high and high school level, different platforms, um, sporadic use and for different purposes. You know, a lot of it was for the college application process. So one of our other goals was really to build that consistency for our students and for our staff. So we have, would have a consistent tool that would meet the needs of a sixth grader all the way through a 12th grader um, and move with those students. So that kind of drove us to looking for that platform um, and doing some research just to see what was out there. I mean, that, that's, we hear that a lot, you know, the whole, we, you, your district was kind of far ahead that you, you knew you were going to have to collect more data. Right. And so you went to get a platform, which is great for you. We hear all the time from districts, the, the opposite of the, oh my God, we need help work. I have 800 spreadsheets that I'm emailing to people. Right. It's great that neighbor that you and Naperville got ahead of that. Um, you know, so you saw that coming on the horizon. So mm -hmm. what did you actually do to, to evaluate platforms? Was it an RFP? Yeah. Did you have yeah. a student committee? Did you just throw sure. a dart at a wall and uh, <laughs> landed on a good logo? Like what was the, what was the process? No, for this one, you know, because of all of those, those big critical factors that I just mentioned, we actually did do a formal RFP process where, um, and, and it was, it was pretty detailed. Like we looked at just what you said, a lot of those indicators that we were going to need. And we looked at the curriculum and the tools that we wanted. And we really had a lot of ask in our, in our um, request that we put out. So we had some responses. We did a formal vetting process. Um, we brought in uh, users across our platform, administrators at the district office, building administrators, counselors, teacher leaders. Um, we did, anyway, they came in, we did some um, vendor demonstrations and, and had a formal you know, rubric that we assessed everything on. And, and when it was looking like, you know, school links was coming out as one of those top the top, um, you know, vendor, we actually did say to some students, you know, we, could, could you get into this platform and take a look at us and give us some feedback? But, you know, we did it more on the back end of this is the tool where, you know, we have vetted and we has come out on top and just as kind of a confirmation of what we, we thought they were going to say, we did ask some of those student users to, to, to give us some feedback. So, yeah, we did a formal you know, huge process. So, <laughs> so and what did the students say? Were they, were they like, oh yeah, this is great. It, yeah. You know, we'd use this hundred percent. Like how did, what was that feedback like? So it was, um, you know, kind of interesting because you're just asking them for kind of an isolated snapshot without really a lot of context. And the feedback was very good. I mean, our biggest driver, I would say, even in the RFP process for all of us was looking for something that was really, really student focused, right? They kept the students' needs in the front and center in every part of the tool. Um, we wanted it to be friendly. Um, we wanted it to be inviting because as you know, you know, a lot of the work we are doing in our counseling curriculum, for example, it's, you know, it's not graded. It's not necessarily a class period. So in order to have students and families really want to engage in that learning, it also needed to be inviting and engaging to people. So, and for the adults, it really did need to be user friendly. So those were kind of a lot of the things. And, and honestly, that's what we heard back, not just from our RFP review team, but you know, even some of those students who got early exposure. So um, that helped that's us great. finalize our decision. It's so interesting because the, the initial part, you talked about how you knew you needed something from a data perspective, from a reporting perspective to make your staff more efficient. But then when you finally got through the process, it was like, oh, and we also, but the, but the number one is we need people yeah. to use it. 100%, 100%. That's, that's probably the number one driver, no matter what. I mean, we as adults can send multiple spreadsheets if we have to, right? If it's the best tool, right. but ultimately if that, the end users aren't in the platform, navigating easily, you know, engaged in the learning, then it's not doing its job. So you mentioned the implementation process earlier, and I kind of, yeah. I, I kind of jumped to, you know, the, the decision part first, but now, so now you've made the decision, right, right. you're getting ready to implement, how'd that go? It was it like a, we flipped the switch or <laughs> I, you know, 
No, we um, <laughs> we actually um, were very strategic in how we approached it. So, you know, we had the, the RFP process closed in, you know, mid-year. So like December, or January timeframe. And so we had made that decision and started our conversations with schools um, and started kind of working to, to how this implementation would be. Um, so what, what we did is I had um, an opportunity probably around that February time frame where I would be able to get all of our counselors six through 12 in one location at one spot. Um, and so we actually started then. We had um, school links came in, Katie came in and, and did uh, a training and an a overview of what the platform can do and, and, and how it will work. And we engaged in that full day um, kind of institute with the, with the counselors to start with um, in February. Data teams are actually starting kind of getting the, the feeds together and the information because we were moving our entire course book as well into the platform. And I'll speak to that later about, you know, we've actually moved our course selection process into schoolings as well. So, um, but we started with our counseling team, very strategic because they were gonna be delivering that curriculum and they were gonna be the ones leading students into the platform. Um, end of the school year, May timeframe, we actually designed some summer virtual modules to help onboard um, staff members, the, the counselors over the summer. So they were, they were easy, maybe six different little tutorials that School Links provided and we encouraged and, and built some structure around having all of our counselors engage in that learning. Um, and so that happened you know, over the summer months. Um, in the spring, we also thought, you know, as I mentioned, we have all those different, we had, we have five junior highs and, and two high schools. So we have a lot of sites that we're gonna be using this, right? So what we decided to do was almost a train the trainer model. So we took, um, talked with our building leadership and identified um, at our junior highs, one counselor from each junior high and then two from each of our high schools to become what we called our schooling champions. And so that team engaged in more intensive onboarding and more intensive training. Um, we built, I actually built a stipend position for those staff members that took through the summer and through the first two years of implementation. So um, their role was really to be the building lead in schooling. So if I were in that department, you know, I would come to that schooling champion if I had questions or I had feedback or I had issues that might have been happening. So we kind of built, built that leadership structure um, to help with our implementation. Um, and then in August, right before school started, we, we did a face-to-face -face, um, boots on the ground. We brought trainers from school links in and we did a full day um, professional learning for our counselors. Um, we repeated that again in November before we went into school um, course selection process. But, um, and then we continued with monthly school links champions calls. So we did virtual calls every month and little team meetings. Um, the IT director who really helped lead this with me, um, he and I, we had weekly meetings, you know, every Tuesday morning, we would sit and kind of coordinate what was happening. So um, like I said, it was very strategic. We tried to build some structure that would help support learning. Um, we focused on the counselors first. Um, we set a date of, um, I, think it, I think it was like September 29th, all students would be in the program. So like we set some very, very measurable goals um, for that first year of implementation. It sounds like a very structured rollout. <laughs> and I, and I yeah. love the, the schooling's champion, mm -hmm. you know, model there where, cause you know, we do our best with the chat and having the implementation matter, all those things, but hearing from someone in the district say, hey, this is how I'm using it and it can make your life better, clearly is that, that extra mile. It, it actually helped us just, you know, kind of get that um, point person for each building to give feedback and to help carry communication and messages. But I, I will just say the champions became very um, adept at using the, like School Links has, as you know, has such a great help feature. You know, it's very responsive and, and anytime during the day, they would actually contact and provide feedback and, and get questions answered for themselves and for their department. So that actually led to a neat partnership um, as well. So it sounds like the staff reaction was pretty positive. 
because it because of the structure it kind of had to be what was the yeah. student reaction if there was one yeah well we had um some very you know the kids were very successful at navigating and getting into the tool and starting to learn um we, like i said we had set a date that we wanted to have everybody exposed to it and every every student to get kind of an onboarding lesson um, and we were up in the probably 90 percent completion rate that first year with kids getting in there. Um, we also did a hard push with our parents around um, uh, the fall conferences, you know, parent teacher conference timeframe. We had communication that went out to also invite our parents to get in as, as viewers into the program. And then quite frankly, we used it with our curriculum. So for me, it was, um, you know, every probably quarter we had lessons developed at each grade level that a counselor would either push into a classroom to deliver or we'd have like a homeroom structure sort of schedule where the, the lesson would be delivered so every quarter um, we were using school links either to help us deliver the lesson or to be the portal where we would collect that evidence of learning um, so the feedback we had on that was again students found it easy to use um, it integrated really, really well. We're a one-to-one -one district and we use Google EDU. So it integrated really well with any of the homegrown um, documents and tools that kids wanted to upload and use. Um, we were successful in getting our courses in there so kids could actually see their schedules and their and their and um, some of their own personal data. So I, I, I do think it was a very, we've had a good response. Um, you know, we have our own work around Probably the paradigm shift for us, the biggest one has been in the four-year planning versus an annual course selection. So really getting people to think four years in advance and work backwards um, has been a, a paradigm shift for us, just um, not just with the tool, but with just our work. Yeah, could you expand on that a little bit about how sure. your your district is embracing course selection within school links and oh, how that's, yeah. that's changed? Yeah, so we wanted to, in, so when a, we wanted it so when a student went into the portal that they could actually get a snapshot of, you know, the work they're doing with the counselors, the coursework that they've been taking, um, that they could see some of the test scores and things that we load into there. So some of their indicators, we wanted the students and the parents to be able to see that. And we also wanted um, a streamlined way for them to, to kind of record, you, you know, if we're encouraging that purposeful planning and that purposeful course selection, we wanted them to kind of think from the end in mind. So that shift to, I'm not just picking classes to check the box for next year, right? And to meet my graduation requirement, but I'm picking courses and selecting pathways based on what my end goal is. So if I wanna go on to become a teacher or an educator, I'm looking for those opportunities to engage in that type of learning. So with that, we put, um, we have all of our courses, all of our offerings in the School Links platform um, with course codes and all that, that, you know, by department with course descriptions and, and um, prerequisites. Uh, we also loaded, um, so it kind of crosswalks for us against the requirements for graduation. Um, it, it also gives a student opportunity to see the different course um, career pathway areas that we offer. So that also is visible in school links and students can select. That starts for us. Um, so, and then, then kids revisit that every year, right? So like you make your plan, but maybe you didn't like the classes you picked and you need to change it. So, so there is an annual revision of that. And that usually happens for us around, it's, it's between December and January um, when kids are getting in there and either creating their four-year plan or retooling it and, and, and re um, deciding if they want to pick different classes. That happens um, across sixth or eighth grade through 12th grade. Um, and then they meet with their counselors to confirm that. And then about early February, we take whatever has been put into school links as my selection for next year, you know, not just the four years, but for next year. And we pull that data out and put it into our, um, we use Infinite Campus as our, our system. And so we put that in to start creating schedules and determining FTE and all the kind of back end stuff that we do to get ready right. for the next school year. So that's really great. I can't, <laughs> I think back on my time in, in, in junior high and high school, and I, I don't even think I ever thought about what 
next year's classes would be until, you know, that middle of August when I'm like, oh, I have to go summer's over and I have to go back to school. I wonder what I'm taking this year kind of thing, you know, and for, for it to, you to move that so far, you know, forward into like a real planning process, it, it must, it must make not only the, the counselors, but it must make the students feel more empowered as well. We hope so. And also um, parents, right? So that they can help kind of navigate that with them. But, you know, in all, in all transparency, you know, we implemented that. We did that once and then kind of the world shut down. So we had to do it virtually the second year, which was very successful. And so what we're concentrating on this year is, you know, making sure that we have everything in there that's that's changed or updated and kind of robust and making sure that they're all the language that they're using is consistent and really also focusing on how can we communicate better with our stakeholders about the, the four-year plan right um so yeah we're not perfect but i think it's been each year we've done it we've learned and it's getting more streamlined i guess is what i'm trying to say you know a little more a little more natural. People are getting more um, inclined on how to how to use it and how to do it. So every year we get a little better, right? That's <laughs> that's kind of how K twelve education works, right? Yes. So uh, we've talked about a lot of different facets. You know, just how what kind of results have you seen? What kind of adoption? What kind of mm -hmm. metrics? What kind of how sure. how's it? How what what's been the results so far? I guess sure. that's the way I would say it. Well, so far, um, we have been pretty successful. We have about 95% of our high schools are actually our six to 12 students have, have completed like the, the find your path, which is kind of their first onboarding piece to get into school links. Um, we're at about 85% of our, our high school kids have done the career assessments uh, survey in there as well. Um, over this one, I, I really like our 12th graders, which, you know, we're kind of looking at strategically because they're getting ready to, to leave and head off. We have about 94% of them have logged into school links already three times this year. So like to do some of these different things, which is a good indicator for us of how many times we're going to. Um, last year, even with kind of the remote structure we had, we had over 94% of our students successfully without any you know, questions or issues, were able to submit their course plans and get them approved in school links. Um, and then we had of that class that graduated last year, 93% of them were able to just request and send their documents to colleges even through school links and complete their application process through school links. So those to me are you know, up in your 80s and 90s percent of, of um, success, even when a good chunk of our school last year in Illinois, we were we were remote for fully virtual. So um, it's it that's a good um, stepping stone for us. I think what we're doing this year is we are also so we've been very strategic of keeping our counselors as kind of the the main users as the adults um, in the tool. This year we're going to actually start um, training and adding some of our specialists. So we're adding some of our special education teachers into the program. Um, some of our EL teachers into the program so that they can also start having those college and career conversations and planning conversations with their students. Um, our career and tech ed teachers are really um, going to be added to the platform this year because they want to use it just as an instructional tool, right? They're talking about, you know, industry trends and career opportunities and, and what kind of learning goes with that in their classes. So they want to actually use it um, as an instructional tool tied to their content. So we're going to target those. Um, we are also going to be working with our activities directors at each of the high schools to find out. There's a feature in School Links that has um, experience tracking, right? So I can record mm -hmm. volunteer hours. I can record my involvement in co-curriculars and extracurriculars. So we're going to really build some structure around how is that going to be, how are the adults going to help manage and support that part of the tool? And then ultimately, we have a really strong industry partner business partnership in the Naperville area. And so our ultimate goal is how can we also start getting some of those local internships and job shadows and opportunities to surface into the tool as well. So we have a lot ahead of us, but um, I think so far it's, we're off to a good start. Yeah, I mean, those stats were all, you know, I agree, high 80s, 90s, you know, that's, 
that's more than I hear from most districts. And I love how you talked about how it's your, your goal this year, next year is really to branch out and get more people involved in that college planning, career exploration conversation with students. Cause you know, it's not just, it's not just the responsibility of counselors and career advisors. Yes. It's the responsibility of the district. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. So and, and in partnership with, and in partnership with parents at home. I mean, I can't stress that enough that, you know, that it, we can't do it all. And so that's why that user-friendly tool, that, you know, ability to kind of keep everything in one portal it was so important. So whatever users going in can see kind of those responses that kids have, the plans that kids are making, the colleges that they're favoring. So it, it, that's why that consistent structure, you know, we talked about at the very beginning for us was so, is, is so important. Yeah. So last question. Okay. What's your advice for new districts that are considering bringing yeah. on school mix? Well, I think each district has to approach it differently, right? Like we're we in Naperville, you you know you heard like very strategic and 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 step by step, um, and and that may not be the way you know you approach it, but I guess the thing I would say is our partnership um, with School Links we have found to be extremely responsive. Um, the product is continually improving. So, you know, the way it looks this week might look completely different next week or not completely, but like upgraded and, and changed. Um, and I can't stress enough that it's student focused. And I think if when you're making that decision for whatever pace or whatever work you're going to implement, keeping that student front and um, center in that decision making is probably the best. Um, so my advice would be, you know, talk to people who are using it, you know, get yourself a demo, you know, go through and see uh, what kind of problems you're trying to solve and see how that tool can help support and manage and organize some of that back end information for you. It's great advice. I hope every district <laughs> takes it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jill, for your, for your time and uh, have a great day. Nice chatting with you. Bye now.